students. In this video, we will review questions number 58 to 62 in the 2024 practice exam form B. Grab a notebook and pencil and let's get started. Number 58, we have a table that contains last year's total sales. Let's read the word problem. The table above shows the number of each type of vehicle sold at a dealership last year. If 1,000 vehicles will be sold next month, what is the best estimate based on last year's sales of the number of two-door cars that will be sold? Let's take a look at what happened last year for two-door cars. Looking at the table here, there were a total of 2,250 two-door cars that were sold out of a total of 9,000 vehicles. For this year, we need to determine what amount that would be equivalent to out of a total of 1,000 vehicles. We can use a proportion to solve this problem. Now that we have our proportion, we can go ahead and cross multiply. So we have 9,000X equals 2,250 times 1,000. I've mentioned before that I prefer to not multiply right away, but instead leave the numbers in factored form, meaning 2250 times 1000 can remain just this way. Now we will divide both sides by 9000 to see if there's any way we can cancel out our problem without having to perform a cumbersome amount of computations. Notice both 1,000 and 9,000 have three zeros. So we can divide both of these numbers by 1,000. Essentially, that means canceling out the zeros. So we will cancel out three zeros in both the numerator and the denominator. The 1,000 becomes a one because 1,000 divided by 1,000 is one and 9,000 becomes nine because 9,000 divided by 1,000 is nine. Now we need to check if nine can divide into 2,250. The divisibility rule for nine lets us know that a number is divisible by nine if the sum of the digits is also divisible by nine. So let's see, two plus two is four, plus five is nine, plus zero is still nine, and nine is divisible by nine. Therefore, we can go ahead and divide 2,250 by nine. Nine divided by nine is one, and let's see what's happening up here. Nine can't go into two, but nine can certainly go into 22 two times. Since nine times two is 18, the remainder will be four. 45 divided by nine is five, and zero divided by nine is zero. Therefore, X equals 250. If 1,000 vehicles will be sold next month, then 250 vehicles is likely going to be two-door cars. Let's enter our final answer. Since the number is positive, we will start right here in the white box. We will write a two, then a five, then a zero. Remember, this part is not what's going to count when you fill in your answers on the actual exam. What will count is the bubbles that you fill in. So be sure to fill in these bubbles nice and dark. Make sure you are precise in which bubbles you fill in to make sure that you get your full credit. Number 59, in a scale drawing of a rectangular garden, the length is 15 inches and the width is nine inches. In the drawing, two inches represents three yards. What is the width of the actual garden in yards? Let's set up a diagram. In the drawing, the length is 15 inches and the width here is nine inches. And they let us know that two inches represents three yards. Since we're trying to find the width of the actual garden, we will be more focused on the number nine inches. So if two inches is equivalent to three yards, we have nine inches is equivalent to X yards. We can use a proportion to solve. After cross multiplying, we have two X equals 27. We'll divide both sides by two and we have x equals 13.5 yards. When entering the answer in the grid, we have to remember to hold one space for the decimal point. We will have a one here in the white box, a three right here, a decimal point, and a five. And then we'll 
bubble in the answers. Remember, this is the most important part. So make sure you probably even want to do this first <laughs> to ensure that you get your full credit. So our final answer is 13.5. Number 60. A kindergarten teacher has 72 crayons, 60 pencils, and 84 sheets of paper to distribute to the children in her class. If each child receives an equal number of each item and there are no items remaining, what is the greatest possible number of children in the class? My first thought is what number can equally divide into 72, 60, and 84? It might be easiest to write out the factors of the smallest number. The factors for 60 are listed right here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 12, 15, 20, 30, and 60. The question is asking if each child receives an equal number of each item. So I'm looking for a number here that can divide evenly into all three of these numbers. For example, the number two can divide into all three of these numbers. So let's say there were two children. Each child would have 36 and 36 of the crayons. They would also have 30 and 30 of the pencils, and they would have 42 sheets of paper each. So this is if there were only two children. But the goal here is to identify the greatest number of children in the class. So basically, this question is testing your understanding of something called the greatest common factor. So yes, two was a common factor, but what is the largest number that can divide into all three of these numbers? By starting off with 60, I can work backwards to find the biggest number that is a common factor for all three. So we know that 60 cannot divide into 84 and 72. We know that 30 cannot divide into 84 and 72. 20 cannot divide into those numbers either. 15 cannot divide into 84 and 72. So I will try 12 because 12 is the greatest common factor between these three numbers. So if there were 12 students, each of the 12 would get six crayons, each of the 12 would have five pencils, and each of the 12 would have seven sheets of paper. 12 is the number that can evenly divide into all three of these numbers. Let's write in our final answer. We will have 12 written here at the top, starting with the white box, and we'll bubble in the number one and bubble in the number two. Number 61. Mr. Smith opened a retirement account with a deposit of $900. This account earns 5% simple interest annually. How many years will it take for his $900 deposit to earn $360 in interest? The simple interest formula is written right here for you. I, which is represented by simple interest, is the principal times the rate times the time. Since the goal is to have $360 in simple interest, right? We can replace I with 360. The principal, which is the initial amount was $900 and the rate was 5%. So we can turn that into a decimal. In some cases, a fraction might be easier as well. And then we're multiplying by time, which is the number of years it's going to take to get $360 in simple interest. For the purposes of our problem, I'm actually going to use a fraction instead because we can go ahead and cancel out. So I'll show you how that works. We have 360 equals 900 times five over 100 times time. If you feel more comfortable working with the decimal, please feel free to do so. We will cancel out 100 divided by 100 is one and 900 divided by 100 is nine. And now we have nine times five is simply 45 T. So 360 equals 45T. And the last step is to divide both sides by 45. So T equals 360 divided by 45. When you divide, you'll see that the answer is eight. It will take eight years for his $900 deposit to earn $360 in interest. We will start right here in the white box and write the number eight and we will also bubble in the number eight as well. Number 62, solve the equation for X. For these types of problems, I love to cancel out as much as I can. I will rewrite the problem here at the bottom. So let's cancel out what we can. 
I know that seven can divide into both 14 and 49. So let's see what we have. 14 divided by seven is two and 49 divided by seven is seven. I noticed that seven can also divide into 21. So seven divided by seven is one and 21 divided by seven is three. I also know that two can divide into 48. So two divided by two is one and 48 divided by two is 24. And finally, I know that three can divide into 24. So three divided by three is one and 24 divided by three is eight. Look at that. We were able to cancel out a lot of this problem. So we're left with one times one times X, which is simply X divided by one times eight, which is eight. And that's equal to 0 0.875. Our final step is to multiply both sides of this equation by eight. Our final answer will be the product between 0 0.875 and 8. So let's see what we have. I can do the math right up here so you can see it very clearly. We know that our final answer will have three places after the decimal point. 8 times 5 is 40. We will carry the 4. 8 times 7 is 56 plus 4 is 60. We will carry the 6. 8 times 8 is 64 plus 6 is 70. We will carry the 7. And eight times zero is zero plus seven is seven. So our final answer here is seven. We will write in the number seven here and bubble it in here at the bottom. I wanted to add another way you could have approached this problem. Automatically, when I saw the number 0 0.875, I have this memorized in my mind that 0 0.875 is equivalent to seven eighths. It's in your best interest to take some time to memorize all of the basic fractions. We're talking about one half, one fourth, three fourths, all the eighths. So one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, all the way up to seven eighths, really knowing by heart what those fractions are in decimal form. So when we were able to simplify this fraction here to one eighth, right? We had one eighth times X equals seven eighths it would make sense that we would have to multiply one eighth times seven to get seven eighths. So that's another way I was actually able to do this just a little bit faster to avoid having to multiply here at the end. But either strategy will work just fine. If you learned something in this video, please go ahead and like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Toodles.